Many hip hop artists have gone through amazing transformations over the course of their career, like Ice Cube going from one of the most gangster members of NWA to starring in Are We There Yet in 21 Jump Street, to Snoop Dogg going from Murder Was The Case to Cooking With Martha Stewart. But all of these pale in comparison to nature's greatest transformation of all. I am here at the Natural History Museum at their Seasonal Butterfly Pavilion exhibit. This exhibit gives you live close-up interaction with one of nature's most beautiful species of insects. You not only get to see butterflies, but also every single stage in their life cycle, enabling you to experience butterflies like never before. All right, Hip Hop MD, Hip Hop Science. I'm with my new friend, Shayna. She's the official GI, gallery interpreter, right? Awesome. And she's gonna be telling us a little bit about the Butterfly Pavilion, fun facts, what different butterflies we could find here, and maybe some cool, interesting things that you've seen over your time here, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so let's go for a walk, right? Let's sure. walk. How long have you been uh, working here at the Butterfly Pavilion? Uh, well, I've worked with the museum about two and a half years. We do yeah. this uh, exhibit. Mm -hmm. for the spring and summer each year. Okay. So it's a seasonal uh, pavilion. We mm -hmm. will do spider pavilion later. Come oh, back in the fall, check that watch out. Watch for that one coming soon. Absolutely. Okay. So I've uh, worked in here a few different times. Nice. It's a little different every year. There's yeah. always something new in here. New species, Lots of different, different things species. coming in. Yeah, okay. We get to see that whole metamorphosis process happen. In that here is as well. absolutely amazing. That's one of the things I'm most excited about to see today is you know, since we got all the caterpillars and yeah. the pupas here and the butterflies, we get to see literally everything across the whole life cycle sure. of the butterfly's life. Now, as you can tell, I'm sweating. This is why I'm hot. This is why I'm hot. It's a little humid, <laughs> a little hot today. Here, I woke up yeah. this morning, it was raining. Um, as far as conditions go, yeah. is this an ideal? ideal condition right now for the butterflies? The butterflies do like the heat, at least up mm. to a point. Yep. Um, but some of these species are native here to California, so okay. they're pretty used to uh, our local climate. Yep. Others might be found in the Gulf states, so the southeast, where humidity is certainly up yes, normal certainly thing, up there. Yep. And down into Central and South America as well. So okay, the butterflies awesome. are pretty okay with this. Now, what are some of the different species that we can find here? So we get a ton of different species in here. One of uh, the most common are our two longwing species. So there's these okay. zebra longwings coming okay. past us here and mm -hmm. Julia longwings. Julia longwings. Yeah, so okay. those are two species, for example, that like to use this passion vine as a okay. host plant. Okay. So if you watch long enough, you might even be able to see some of these longwing species laying some more of these little yellow eggs on the ends of the branches. Butterfly wings are actually transparent. They're covered with thousands of tiny scales that reflect light in different colors. But underneath is a protein layer, the same protein that makes up a butterfly's exoskeleton. So if not for the scales, you can literally see right through. As far as the plant species that you have here, are these all specially curated for the types of butterflies that you guys have here at the pavilion? They are chosen certainly as uh, certainly good nectar providers. So okay. adult butterflies, not so picky about where they get their nectar. Yeah. It's a small <laughs> or very open flower where they they can reach that proboscis down in to get the nectar, yep. they're happy. But mm -hmm. as far as when they uh, lay their eggs, they are very picky. Dirty Sprite, Scissor, Perp. If we were butterflies, that would literally be the only thing on the menu. Butterflies are limited to a liquid-only diet. They have no jaws, but rather a small straw-like probe called a proboscis that enables them to sip nectar from plants. Take that, little Wayne. Different species have different host plants, mm. and we do have a few of those host plants for certain species in here to lay okay. their eggs, uh, and then have those caterpillars hatch out, mm -hmm. form chrysalids, and uh, emerge as adult butterflies. Awesome, can we check out some of those host plants? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, let's so do it. So this species, the giant swallowtail, Okay. that's what's gonna use this uh, as a host plant. We do have one of those uh, caterpillars that's working on forming that chrysalis. Mm -hmm. So what this caterpillar has done is actually laid a little silk pad to attach uh, the rear end and then kind of a almost like a little uh, strap sort of a safety net uh, around uh, the back I'm like a caterpillar when it comes to racks eat a thousand times my mass life cycle strong I'm just silky like that Whew, you get it a thousand times my mass caterpillars eat a thousand times they mass silk priscilla's 
butterfly bar, son. We got a big beauty right here. Can you tell us about this guy? Yeah, so the Cecropia moths that we see in here uh, are kind of guest stars in our butterfly pavilion. Guest stars. Certainly, right? uh, you okay. know, uh, as moths, they're cousins to the butterfly, uh, mm -hmm. part of that family tree. Yep, it's another branch the order of, the of Adoptera, yep. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, so, moths are typically nocturnal, right? That's true, mm -hmm. yeah. And you will see some adaptations on these moths, mm -hmm. things like those really nice feathery antennae mm -hmm. that help them to pick up more chemical uh, signals instead of relying so much on uh, vision, okay. as these butterflies do when mm -hmm. there's light out during the day. Yep. Uh, so these nocturnal moths uh, are really well specialized to uh, move around at night, mm -hmm. but as adults like this, they have a really short lifespan. These mm -hmm. types of moths actually don't eat anything as don't eat adults. Anything at all. They munch and munch away as caterpillars, just mm -hmm. like the butterfly caterpillars do. Yep. But they build up those fat reserves, and as an adult, once they've emerged from their pupa, their mm -hmm. cocoon, they are basically interested in finding a mate, laying some eggs, and they wow. survive as Talk long as they can on reserve. Is there anything specific that you guys have to do to encourage mating here? Is everything here happening naturally? Um, can you talk to us a little bit about that? I did mention that we had host plants for some species in here. So those butterflies are only going to lay their eggs if they can find the right host plant around. Yep. Um, but certainly all the butterflies in here, if they've got others of their own species, they mm -hmm. may uh, mate and try to lay those eggs. So we got to have food, we got to have plant source, right? Exactly. Um, right environment, weather conditions, mm -hmm. and go get it on, and right? Absolutely. As you can imagine, being so tiny and flying constantly takes a lot of energy. That's why most adult butterflies actually produce no waste, but rather use it all internally as energy. Butterflies and moths are obviously very unique in the fact that they go through this whole different life cycle. There aren't many mm -hmm. species of animals that go through a crazy arrangement like this. I mean, sure. amphibians do. Um, but what is the benefit from going from an egg to a larva, caterpillar stage to a pupa and then emerging as a butterfly? Is there any advantageous uh, benefit to that as far as evolution goes? One of the reasons uh, that we think that complete metamorphosis is something that happens in butterflies and some other insects as well mm -hmm is that it basically prevents the, the babies, the larvae, okay. caterpillars, from competing for the same types of food mm. as the adult butterflies. So yep. as a larva, a caterpillar, they're eating the leaves of their host plant, yep. but as adults, they're drinking nectar from flowers. So mm. they have a completely different set of mouth parts, gotcha. uh, as well as, of course, that different mode of uh, transportation flying yep. around, and exactly. also that they sort of can exploit the, the fullest uh, range of food sources. Kaleidoscope isn't just the name for the amazing toy that we played with when we were little kids. When a group of butterflies arranged together to form an amazing arrangement of colors, that is also known as a kaleidoscope. We all know uh, butterflies, it's very exotic, beautiful arrangement of colors. Sure. Um, as far as some of the species that we have here, um, are there any particular reasons for any of the colorations? Some butterflies are going to have colors that help them blend in. So yeah. they're uh, betting on a predator, just not finding them at all. Mm -hmm. uh, now, of course, there's lots of predators for butterflies. Yeah, of course, like Birds, everything. <laughs> lizards, Bottom rodents, of the food chain, spiders, right? <laughs> other insects, all sorts of things would love to make a meal out of a butterfly. Yep. So one option is to just not get seen. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have, for example, a green butterfly. Everyone always wants to come and see that green malachite in here, yep. but that green color is an important defense for it. Mm -hmm. uh, now we also have some butterflies that are using color as a warning. Instead mm -hmm. to uh, advertise to predators mm -hmm. that they don't taste very good. Yep. So they're getting those toxins from the plants they eat. Okay. And uh, to let predators know that, mm -hmm. they uh, use those bright colors like yellows and oranges, stripes, all of these things are telling predators, don't eat me. Mm -hmm. And uh, predator learns that lesson pretty, pretty, pretty learns quickly. pretty quick. You're gonna yeah, learn today. Hey. That is an official wrap here at the Natural History Museum's Butterfly Pavilion. We got to learn what makes these unique insects so amazing. How amazing, you ask? Let's count the waves. Butterflies are amazing because their beauty isn't just something to marvel at. It acts as a self-defense mechanism and as a camouflage to help protect them from predators. They're also amazing because they give us a look at the unique relationship between plants and animals and give us an inside look at the often hidden world of insects. They're also important pollinators and help further advance the circle of life right here on Earth. 
that just like many other organisms, butterflies are at risk due to human activity, proving once again why it's so important to preserve their natural habitats. I'm the Hip Hop MD, this is Hip Hop Science, we are off to our next science quest.